And we've talked about how space is expanding and causing every galaxy to move away from every other galaxy, and therefore that everything should appear to be redshifted. However, a number of students have pointed out that not all galaxies are redshifted. In particular, this galaxy, Andromeda M31, is actually blue-shifted. It's moving towards us. Now, how is that consistent with a space that's expanding? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So, Brian, what... Let's imagine for the moment that space wasn't expanding. Yeah. It's had lots of big, heavy galaxies sitting around all over the place. Now, because they're big and heavy, there's going to be gravity. They're going to attract each other. What would happen in this case, do you think? Well, let's have a look. So if we go through and just populate space with galaxies, you can think each one here. They're going to be attracted. The closer they are, the more the attraction. And they will merge and form new galaxies. We typically think that's how elliptical galaxies might form. And so eventually you're going to form a whole bunch of bigger and bigger galaxies and i think the logical conclusion of this would be eventually you'll end up with probably one big galaxy more or less in the center yeah well of course we have to talk about an infinite universe yeah. yes there's no way things could go that big but nonetheless you might imagine say every megaparsec or so there might be something absolutely big and then nothing for a large area. But what you see is before they all collide, they often form swarms and they're all moving in different directions. Some are falling in this direction, some are falling in that direction. So what you'd see in a universe like that before it's had time to all merge into a few big galaxies would be some galaxies moving towards you and some moving away from you. Maybe the nearby ones would be mostly falling in towards you or you'd be falling in towards them, so they'd be very blue shifted. The further away ones could be going one way or could be going the other way. Right, and so you just have to think of, you know, it's just like gravity, you think, in our own solar system or within our own galaxy. Because space isn't expanding, gravity works more or less as you think of it working uh, around, you know, Earth. Okay, so that's what we get if galaxies weigh a lot and there's no expansion of space. Let's go to the opposite extreme. What would happen if their galaxies weighed almost nothing and we turned gravity off somehow and space is expanding pretty fast? Yeah, okay, so let's just do that. It, and this is more or less, I think, how we often present the expanding universe. Everything moves away from everything else without exception. And so over time, the fur, you know, things will be further and further apart over time. And so that just continues on forever. If, there is, if galaxies don't weigh anything, there's no gravity. So they just sort of uh, go on their trajectories without uh, stopping. Okay, so it's just space expanding. Now, of course, in reality, space is expanding, but galaxies do weigh something. So we want to right. sort of com kind of combine the two previous ones. So let's show you a simulation of that. What I've done now is simulated expanding space, but galaxies, or in this case, colored balls, which actually have mass. All right, so you start expanding the universe, but gravity is acting. So think about it. Yep, see those two are sucked together. Galaxies Here, that are nearby have a lot of gra gal uh, gravity attracting them. And space isn't expanding much. Galaxies that are a long ways apart, gravity's weak, the expansion's a lot, not much happens. And so you really do get that things nearby merge together, form bigger galaxies. But then the rest of things, the further apart they are, the less they're affected by the gravity. Yeah. And it's not as if there's some magic distance which gravity wins or something else wins. It's not as if things are bound or they're not. It's just that as you get further and further away, the gravity is weaker because it obeys the inverse square law, and there's more and more space between to make that expand, so the ratio of the two effects gets bigger and bigger. So it, it turns out there is a magic distance. We call that the turnaround radius. That's the distance that a galaxy will, you know, two galaxies will be able to essentially be apart forever. So if they're or, close enough, the gravity will win. They'll be pulled yeah. apart and then collide. Further apart, they'll fly apart forever. And there'll be some magic radius where they'll just be on the boundary between the two. That's right. And it turns out we think that's on order of probably, uh, oh, 20 million light years or something in our universe. So what does this mean for the Hubble diagram? This is the plot of distance against redshift. So our first simulation... So yep, so now we've got expanding. massive galaxies, no expansion. Yep. And what you see is basically a scatter diagram. Some things moving towards, some are away as they swarm around each other. Um, some about half will be blue shifted and half will be red shifted. Yep. But now if we make space expand and get rid of the mass, you get a nice beautiful straight line. Yep, nice straight line. Distance and redshift are exactly. And the reality of the universe we live in looks something like this. 
where... So it's just add the two last ones together. Yeah, and so you have motion. So for example, this might be the uh, uh, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, mm -hmm. which uh, you know happens to be coming towards us. Uh, but as you go further and further away, the effect of redshift becomes you know, very large, mm -hmm. uh, and so it dwarfs the little scatter, yeah. but effectively you just end up with this little scatter that just goes on forever and ever. It's typically these things are moving around at about 100 kilometers a second or thereabouts. So yeah. some, if they're nearby, some will be plus 100, maybe minus 100, ballpark figure. And then as you go up, there's still a range of about 100. They're moving just as fast as the ones nearby. The difference is you've now got, a say, 1,000 kilometers a second worth of expanding space on top of it. So none of these are going to be blue shifted. That's it's right. only when you get very close that these 100 kilometer a second motion can overwhelm the Hubble flow, the expansion of space. So you can kind of guess that we're going to have an interesting future between us and the Andromeda galaxy. Why? Well, because we're going together right now at more than 200 kilometers per second. We're 700 kiloparsecs, or about 2 million light years, and you divide those numbers by each other, and what you see is we have a date with destiny. And here's a simulation of what's going to happen in the future. So we've got Andromeda behind Brian and Milky Way above my head, yep. and the simulation over here tells you how many billion years in the future we're talking about, and they're coming closer. And this actually isn't just for these galaxies in our own local group. It's for actually most galaxies live in groups or clusters. And then within these clusters, they're close enough that gravity is going to overwhelm the expansion of space. And so you're going to get collisions in most of these situations. And so we're going to end up forming a giant super galaxy. The first collision, oh, three to four billion years in the future. And then six billion, seven billion years from now, a new galaxy. I don't know what we're going to call it. And the whole universe is going to be like this. Essentially, you're going to end up with these little clumps of big galaxies separated as sort of as islands separated by the expansion of space where other clumps of galaxies come together and you just so you're going to have clumps of galaxies with big vast empty pieces of space in between them this is not a form of doom i mean the earth will still be around at that time they're probably a bit uncomfortably hot but having two galaxies going through each other the stars are not going to collide the planets are not going to collide it's like two people firing machine guns at each other the odds of any bullets hitting head-on is remote and in fact bullets are much bigger relative to the separation than the stars are. So when two galaxies go through each other, it looks enormously violent. But in fact, most of the stars will never get close to another star, so we'll be perfectly fine. We can sit on Earth and watch yes. Milky Way get rather bigger and rather more disturbed. But it's not going to kill us. There are plenty of other things in space that can kill us, but this is not one of them. Yes. So anyway, so hopefully that explains how peculiar motions work within the expanding universe. And uh, here is our home eight, nine billion years in the future.